Hello, in this presentation I will talk about robotic tools used in robotic arms. The aims of the presentation are, on the one hand, to know the type of robotic tools attached to a robot's flange to perform a specific task or functionality. The idea is to get familiar with robotic tooling systems such as grippers, hands, suction caps, electromagnets, weldings or even painting guns, among others. Finally, I will explain the tool changers that allow the robot to work with multiple tools on the same part. In many manufacturing and assembling processes in which we use robots, the robot tool plays a fundamental role. Obviously, the type of tool we need to use will depend on the operation that we need to carry out on the part. Here, I have made a classification of the tools depending whether we have to carry out manipulation operations, material extraction operations, union operations, and other operations such as painting or polishing. Within manipulation tools, we typically find grippers, hands, suction caps, electromagnets, and even some tools with some adhesive uh, properties to manipulate complex objects. If we have to carry out material extraction operations, we might need to drill, to cut, or to mile apart to provide the desired shape. And finally, operations that require joining two or more pieces together are arc or spot welding, as well as gluing. Here I show some gripper examples with two, three, or four fingers, and also I show a robotic hand. Grippers are a very common element that we use whenever we need to pick a part and place it elsewhere. Robotic arms are typically found in humanoid robots, although you might find some manipulator robots that use a robotic hand. Two finger grippers are usually very simple and obviously the most affordable that you can find. But the main inconvenience is that gripping is performed only using two gripping uh, points and therefore no all type of parts can be grasped with a, a two finger gripper. On the contrary, grippers with three or four fingers are much more versatile and can firmly hold almost any object. Sometimes these grippers are also known as robotic hands, so this might be confusing. Obviously, the more complex the gripper is, the more flexibility we have to adapt, let's say, the hand to the part and perform a better grip. But at the same time, the gripper control can be more complicated and obviously they are usually more expensive. How to grip an object? It is a well-known problem in robotics. However, this is beyond the scope of this presentation. In most of the cases, grippers include force or contact sensors that sense the pressure exerted on the part to avoid damage. A very common tool in many types of robots are suction caps, particularly uh, in those that must perform a quick pick-and-place operation such as parallel or scale robots. Always, obviously, if the parts allow it. The idea is that the robot will hold uh, the, the, the part from above thanks to the venturi effect that we have when we use this type of tools. When desired, the absorption force exerted on the part will be released and the part will be free again. Some robots include electromagnets to perform a similar function, but with metallic objects. Finally, some robots include some adhesive sponge to pick up delicate or complex objects with similar functionality as the previous tools. However, these adhesive tools can lose their adhesive properties over time, so they might require some maintenance. To carry out extraction material operations, we have all kinds of tools that can be attached to the robot. Here I have included some images of some of them, but obviously there are many others. Typically, we find tools for drilling or for milling parts and even for laser cutting some parts to provide the required shape of the object. Welding and gluing tools are not directly touching the object, or in case, of, in case of touching it, they do it with a very small separation distance. Depending on the type of welding operation required, we might need to use a spot or an arc welding technique. 
In spot welding, the robot is positioned at, at a specific place we want to join two parts and then by the means of a welding spot we apply a current between the, the ends of the tool to create the union. In arc welding, the robot generates a trajectory just between the profile or the trajectory that we want to join. Some robots have tools that allow play, uh, applying some certain types of resins for gluing parts, as you can see. Robots that use in spray guns usually attack at a certain distance, depending on the part, the nozzle, or the paint used. In addition, they are usually covered with plastics to avoid damaging the robot due to particles floating in the air. We can also polish parts with robots for smooth, smooth finishing. In this case, the tool usually includes a sponge that dampens the forces exerted by the robot on the surface when working on it. To control this force, we can use force and torque sensors uh, that are usually attached uh, to the robot and the factor. As you know, robots are very versatile, but at the same time are expensive. So in many or in most manufacturing uh, and assembling processes, we cannot afford to have multiple robots for each un single operation that the part needs. In addition, moving parts from one robot to another also has a very significant cost to consider. So for this reason, tool changers are used in robotics. They allow us to use multiple tools that are available in a tool warehouse. These tool changers have a common interface that allows coupling a tool and provide it with the required energy and signals that the tool needs. Each robot manufacturer and obviously the companies associated to them have their own tool changers and in general, they are not compatible. Anyway, a common aspect of all tool changers is that they are divided into components, the coupling that is attached to the robot's robot flange and the coupling that is attached to each of the tools. In this video from Shank Company, we can see an animation uh, with a tool changer. And as you can see, the system is modular and the user can adapt it to their own needs, providing various interfaces. As you can see, specifically, the robot, the robot uses um, a gripper to pick a part, changes the tool to perform two spot welding operations, and finally changes the tool again to leave it to leave the part where it was. We can also see that we can use specific tools with the tool changers, for instance, to hold a heavy beam. As you can see. In this presentation, I have done a quick summary on robotic tools we can find in many robotic arms. Thank you very much.